This is day five of fly fishing Christmas Island 2023. We were fortunate enough to be the first group to fish out of the famous Akari house in three years. The fish seemed bigger, more plentiful, and less educated. Today we were going for the slam, milkfish, GTs, triggers, and bonefish. With a storm rolling in, we wanted to get the blue water fish out of the way first. Those are mantas. Oh, right here. Those are the milkfish that we're trying to catch in front of the manta ray. Big old manta ray. Today there were lots of manta rays and it seemed as though they were trying to stay between the milkfish and the boat. Sort of like herding cattle. We saw this behavior time and time again. That's going to get eaten, Dave. Good lord. Now what do you got to do? That spooked him. Come on, man. Throw a little more delicately. Camera on that? Yeah. Get out of there, man array. Darn you. They were cool for a minute. Moments later, that fish came unbuttoned, so we got right back on the main school. Green, uh, olive. The water was so clear that I could easily see my fly. That allowed me to fish a slack line and dead drift the fly with the current. That's how I hooked up so quickly on day two. In most cases, you want to do what Dave is doing and keep your line relatively tight so that you can feel the fish take the fly. Milkfish are a true fly fishing trophy. They have great eyesight and a bad cast or heavy leader can easily spook them. They have unbelievable strength and stamina. If you hook a big one and land it, you've done something that very few fly fishermen even get a chance to do. Got one? Here. 
Knuckle buster. <laughs> What rod is that? Fenway. Fenway Hardy? Yeah. Dave doing the big fish whoop. This is a, a easier deal for me physically, to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Than this deal. I don't know if it's a right handed thing or what. What you got on there, tip it was? 20. Yeah. I'm loaded up. I'm trying to be much harder than the last one. Is he? Bigger fish? No, no. I'm playing much more. Oh, gotcha. I'm playing much more pressure. That's what I mean. First there. That you have the luxury of one in the bag. Oh, it's at that point where you're pulling and he's pulling. Yeah. I feel like he might be moving him. Where you're winning the, the tug of war? Or only the briefest of it. Actually, crank right. down even a hair more on that. It's a good feeling when you start winning. Yeah. I'm learning about my gear, I'll tell you that much. Learning what it can handle? Yeah. <laughs> One snag on the handle. Right. It's a good feeling being on the fly line. Yeah. Watch that boat motor. Watch the prop. Better go forward. I'll go this way. You're good. Yeah. At some point, if you're in the fray, if you're near it, just tap it. Look on it. If I'm what? Say it again. If you're near the leader at the end here. Touch it for you. Mm -hmm. you so so we can be good. Yeah. Okay, now nah, just, just net him. Get another picture. I'll touch it to be sure. Really, it only has to touch your rod tip. Yeah, I don't even have to touch it. <laughs> That's a caught fish in in Florida. As soon as it touches the leader, touches the rod tip after a long fight. The reason is you can't for tarpon anyway. You can't gaff them. You can't net them. So they don't. They call it good if you get the leader. Let me get up on that bow. Want to go around the front? Go around the front. Yeah. 
Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Are you good? Okay. Oh, you got it. English. Come on, English. He's right there. Got him. <laughs> All right. All right. Right in the corner of the mouth. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. Wait, hang on. Hang on. English. Well, you give me tip. Oh, yes. Boat thing. Yes. What about this? <laughs> Wrong thing. Uh, wrong thing. <laughs> wrong tip. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's good. That's good. Work out. Hold up your celebratory drink. I never believed we would ever catch an elk fish. I just wanted to someday. Yeah. You know, it's like. No, I didn't. That's why I got to do that. It's like kind of an afterthought. Right. You know? Maybe not sustainable. Right. As we move into the atoll, the water turns from the dark blue you see in the background to the light blue that we're on and then to a beautiful emerald green. As Dave recuperates from his war of attrition with the milkfish, I start blind casting for giant trevally near big coral covered rocks on the edge of a deep flat. Almost immediately I hook up with the biggest GT of the trip. Now we're in a spot. Uh -oh. Now I can reach it. I'm on a rock. On the rock, yeah. I'm back on the rock. Fighting a big GT is completely different than the finesse fight required to fight a milkfish on a 10 weight rod with a 20 pound tippet. With GTs, especially near big abrasive rocks, the battle is won or lost at the beginning of the fight. While a milkfish has unbelievable endurance, a GT will put everything it has in breaking you off right away. If these fish were leader shy as a milkfish, I don't know how you could ever hope to land one. But their aggressiveness allows you to use a straight 100 pound tippet and leader along with its stout 12 weight rod. Because of this, I'm able to lean on this fish early. I have the drag on my behemoth reel absolutely cranked tight and is one of the heaviest drags made. But as you can see, I'm still having to keep my knuckles from being slammed by the spinning handle. Gotta get over there before he goes down. Stand off. Oh boy, my fly line got torn up. Look, it's peeling. Just a word about fly lines for big game fishing. Get one that incorporates a heavier pound test yeah. core. This one exceeds 50 pounds and it probably saved me the fish of a lifetime. I don't personally trust welded loops, so I cut them off and attach my own homemade braided loops. But if you buy a modern line specific to big game like GTs with a heavy core line, the factory loops should hold. You're having a fight with the butt. Well, I'm too close. It's going straight down. Dave was right, of course. In retrospect, I could have stepped down off the bow and had a better angle to use the butt section of my rod. His comment did, however, remind me that I was coming dangerously close to the breaking point of even a 12-weight rod. 
You back up. I see color. There he is. That's the fish. That's the fish. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Here it is. Holy crap. Oh. You're the man. Oh, you're the man. You're the man. I saw the whole thing. Do, do what? Chase it for quite a while. No, he, he showed up. I stripped twice and he ate it. And I was in the middle of a strip, so I had to hit it with the rod and a strip. Oh my gosh. I'll give it to you, but sit down, sit down. Oh. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa. <laughs> Big ass fish. What do you think that is, Dave? I think it's 40. Yeah, over 40. Over 40. Over 40. As I mentioned earlier, the forecast was for afternoon storms. The wind was picking okay. up and casting for the boat became more and more difficult. We decided to get out and make a last effort on foot. Do you take a picture? Yeah. I didn't know I was throwing at a trigger though. I was excited about catching this trigger fish. It was the one species on my Christmas Island bucket list that I had not been able to hook. However, they didn't nickname triggers Christmas Island permit so that you could blind cast one up. So in terms of accomplishment, there was still something lacking. But you know what? I still got to check this species off my bucket list. Hold that, I'm gonna take the camera off my hat. Finally, huh? Okay. Good. And now I got a trigger. I'm in the trigger club. I'm not sure it wasn't as technical as Dave. But that was a luck trigger. Thank you. We walking the rest of this flat? Uh, we gonna keep walking? Yeah. Okay. As the storm moved closer, we continued to catch trevally and bonefish. Then it crossed my mind that our boat had accomplished a combined Christmas Island Grand Slam, having caught a milkfish, a GT, a bonefish, and a trigger. And Dave might need only a trigger fish to do this on his own. Ah, trigger. It's just floating around. Get him, Dave. Oh, wait, he came, come back, come back. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. He was looking for it. He's coming over. Okay. 
It was a little spooky, huh? He's gonna eat that. Oh, fish right here. Oh. There he goes. Now, Dave doesn't curse, but he's saying something to the fish. Getting nasty. Man, that, that, that trigger was swirling on your fly. I know. And so ended day five. We are blessed to have landed two trophy fish, pulled off a boat grand slam, and nearly an angler grand slam with less than a full day of fishing. All that was left to do was to eat the fresh sashimi that awaited us at the Akari House Lodge.